ABC Shark Tank is designed to give entrepreneurs the opportunity of pitching their business idea to a panel of investors and possibly receiving a deal with one or more of them. Over 11 seasons, the sharks have invested millions, but every once in a while, candidates are not entirely honest about their idea or their true motive. While the investors have made a few bad calls over the years, these 10 Shark Tank scams were so obvious that they were pretty hard to miss. There is not a lot that Mark Cuban hates more than scammers and he is especially skeptical when it comes to weight loss products. Barrett, Jacques, and Crom Carmichael appeared to be unaware of this or they probably would have prepared a little better to deal with Mark. The two appeared in the latest season of Shark Tank seeking $500,000 for a 20% stake in their weight loss snack bar company called Miniscal. The entrepreneurs explained how their bar helps to lower cholesterol and block fat from entering your body through Coleave, which they described as as a proprietary all-natural blend derived from fermented green tea. Cuban quickly had enough because he felt like Jacques and Carmichael were contradicting themselves. Despite their publicity material clearly stating weight loss, they kept saying that it wasn't a weight loss product and as Mark's questions got more aggressive, the other sharks got more and more annoyed, eventually all dropping out. While Shark Tank can be a good platform to get your product out there, it turned out to be a disaster for Miniscal as they not only went home without a deal but also had to listen to Mark Cuban telling the audience not to buy the snack bars because he believed it to be a scam. In recent years, more and more companies have popped up that promote their products by claiming that it appeared on Shark Tank and got the shark's approval, even when in reality it never did. One such example involves Kato diet pills that were promoted as Kato BHB Real Shark Tank Diet Pills in order to trick consumers into believing that the pills had been featured on the show and were endorsed by the show's investors. Thousands of people fell for the scam until Mark Cuban took to Twitter to bash the scammers and the other sharks soon followed, announcing that the product was a placebo and that the company had never been featured on the show, let alone received an investment by any of them. In the end, the Better Business Bureau even got involved in the issue, giving the company an F rating. But since the people behind the company have set up at least 11 different websites and also sell their product on websites like walmart.com and amazon.com, chances are that they won't be shut down anytime soon. Patrick Whaley jumped into the tank in season 6 looking for a $500,000 investment in exchange for 5% equity in his company Titan, which sells weighted compression gear. According to Whaley, a biomechanics engineer by trade, his product is an ideal solution for athletes looking to take their training to the next level as well as for people trying to rehabilitate themselves. He had even used Titan himself after getting shot in the chest when he got caught in the midst of a bank robbery. However, before he could really get into more detail, detail about his company, Mark Cuban already attacked him, asking to hear more about the science behind the product instead of anecdotal evidence. And even though Titan had made nearly a million dollars in revenue the month before, Mark still felt that there was simply too much talk and too little proof to convince him that this wasn't a scam. However, Whaley still received offers from Kevin and Damon, and even though he had to give up more equity than he had wanted to, he ultimately struck a deal with Damon. As you know, Damon and Mark love to call out people that only come to the show for the exposure and this entrepreneur was lucky that she had guest shark Richard Branson on her side. Yuna Kim was seeking $600,000 for 5% of her company's simple habit, a 5 minute meditation app. The sharks quickly questioned her motives saying that she obviously didn't need the money. While she claimed that she was hoping to make a deal and getting a shark like Richard on board who according to her was perfect for the company with his chillness and coolness. Although even Richard admitted that the exposure was probably one of her motives for coming on the show, he and Robert still ended up making Kim an offer. They initially asked for 20% of her company for the $600,000 and even went down to 15%, but the entrepreneur wasn't willing to give up more than 6% and eventually left without a deal. While Damon and Mark may have been a little harsh with her, in the end it did seem like all Kim was looking for was exposure rather than an actual investment. I'm, I'm so out, I'm so out, so out, so out.
While impressing the sharks with a great pitch is pretty important, it is far from enough to get them to invest in your company or product. As Jared Joyce of 5 Minute Furniture found out when he stepped in front of the sharks, asking for $250,000 in exchange for 25% of his company. His pitch started off well as he showed the sharks how easy it is to put together his prefabricated furniture pieces. They were quite impressed and liked the fact that Jared held the patent for the system as well. But when they found out that he had a lot of other inventions as well, Damon wondered whether they were also included in the deal. Jared answered the question by telling Damon, what you are saying is hey let's get married, and I'm saying hey buy me a drink first. This arrogant reaction didn't sit well with the sharks who were also shocked to hear that Jared had started raising funds 7 years ago but hadn't returned any of the money to any investors yet. Mark stated that if he gave Jared the $250,000, he would expect him to eat, sleep and breathe this one deal, but that he didn't see the inventor doing that. Lori and Kevin eventually offered to buy Jared out for $250,000 and made it pretty clear that they weren't interested in a partnership with him. But in the end, Jared went home empty handed as the sharks were unimpressed with his arrogance and too smart to take a risk in him. Miles Penn entered the tank seeking an investment of $2.5 million in exchange for 10% of his company M. Taylor, meaning he valued his company at a whopping $25 million. Giving your company such a high valuation, especially if it's not in the tech industry or not yet something that is mainstream, usually doesn't sit too well with the sharks. But Penn quickly made another mistake when he pointed out that M. Taylor, which sells men's customized shirts by measuring you with your phone's camera, has the tucked and untucked style. While Damon John's company FUBU Shirts does not have that option. This is obviously not the best way to get someone to invest in your company and unsurprisingly Damon was not amused. While Barbara was impressed by the model Miles had brought along with him, he couldn't really convince her with the rest of his pitch, but Miles still managed to get two offers, one by Damon and one by Kevin. But since they both went with a lower valuation, Miles decided not to take either of them, thinking his company was too successful already. Ultimately, his attempt to rip off the sharks failed and he just annoyed them with his arrogance. Mark Sullivan marketed himself as an entrepreneur, songwriter, ladies clothing designer and inventor during his pitch in Shark Tank's third season, and left the investors rather confused. He came to present his Sullivan Generator, a machine that produces natural energy from Earth's rotation and conveniently enough, gold as a byproduct. Sullivan had the vision of developing this new technology and leave a lasting legacy of goodness, but even though he had apparently already invented over a thousand products that make over a billion dollars a year in profits, the sharks seemed to find it hard to believe anything he was saying, or to just keep a straight face. The pitch sounded so out of this world that Robert asked Sullivan how long he was visiting Earth, and Damon wondered if anyone had ever called him crazy. Sullivan wasn't shaken by that however, and when none of the sharks wanted to give him a deal, he simply stated that they probably just didn't get it. Although the sharks made a few mistakes over the years, Bill Leones didn't manage to fool them with his idea of a website called Revestor, a real estate search engine of the future. He was looking for $250,000 in exchange for 10% equity in his company. Leones claimed to have created an algorithm that would help people invest in real estate as it allows you to see a house's value in the future. When Leones said customers would pay $99.99 per month to have access to the website, Mark Cuban outright stated that he hated the business and was out. The sharks appeared to be very skeptical as well and were confused when Leon first said he targeted first time home buyers before later claiming he targeted both typical first time buyers and house flippers. The investors told him that he was speaking from both sides of his mouth and had no business concept which made him appear to be a con artist. Since appearing on the show in 2012, Ryan Naylor's SO watches have become one of the show's most infamous products. The timepieces are apparently infused with negative ions, which according to Naylor work against the positive ions we are bombarded with by electronic devices. Thus the wearer's body is brought back into balance by restoring an ideal energy field. The fact that he had sold over $110,000 worth of SO watches in the previous year certainly intrigued Kevin and while Lori agreed to put the watches to 
to a test, Mark immediately bowed out saying the technology was a joke and he was allergic to scams. The other sharks became more and more skeptical too as Naylor didn't have any tests or data backing the technology up. On top of it all, Damon then accused him of stealing the design of his timepieces from another company. Eventually, Kevin said he would consider investing if Naylor admitted that the negative ion technology was a scam, but the entrepreneur wouldn't do it, affirming his belief in it and ultimately going home without a deal. No thanks, go ahead, you keep it. It's Dallas Mavericks Blue, just That's for you. That's okay, you keep it. Okay. Thank you. Mark, are you allergic to positive negative ion stuff? No, I'm allergic to scams. Joseph Falcone, the owner of 3G's Vino LLC, a wine store operating in Bethpage and Farmingdale, New York, may not have appeared on Shark Tank himself, but he shrewdly used the show for his million dollar scheme. Beginning in September 2014, he lured investors into believing they were funding an up and coming business that had been featured on Shark Tank. The business in question was eventually identified as Copa de Vino, a company that produces a single serving of wine and whose founder, James Martin, turned down finance offers by the Sharks twice for being too low. However, neither Shark Tank nor James Martin had any idea that Falcone was using them to trick unidentified investors from Long Island to give him a total of $872,000 between September 2014 and November 2015. He then spent $520,000 on buying a home in Florida and trading online in securities, according to officials. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.